Hokey dokey. Second example for this problem. If you'd like more of a breakdown, please visit the first example I've worked out. So we're kind of using these uh, rules here uh, about directly proportional relationships and inversely proportional relationships. So let's jump right into it. So number one, if A increases, then Z decreases. Well, A is in the denominator. So if A is increasing, then Z must do the opposite because A is in the denominator. So if A increases, Z decreases, must be a true statement. Number two, if P and A decrease, then Z decreases. So P is in the numerator while A is in the denominator. So if they both decrease, it looks like Z would probably decrease a little bit, but also increase a little bit from A decreasing. So it's it's hard to say because P decreasing and A decreasing would have opposite effects on Z. So unless we know exactly by how much P and A are decreasing, then there's no telling what Z will do. So this is a false statement. Oftentimes you may see statements like this where it says the behavior of P cannot be determined. Something like that is what we would have been looking for uh, for that statement we just looked at for it to be true because we just can't tell what Z is going to do. All right, number three. If P increases, so if the numerator is increasing, then Z decreases. Well, that's false because uh, P is in the numerator, so the numerator should be doing the same thing as the overall value is doing. So if the numerator is increasing, then Z should actually also be increasing. So this is also false. So let's break out the eraser, and we see that B, only one is correct, is our answer. 